Hey guys, I'm back for another flight. We've got the engines running from our previous flight. We're parked at Tilsonburg Airport. Right by the runway, we're going to have to back taxi. Or maybe we'll just take off from runway 07. Haven't decided yet. Let's jump inside. looks good where I left it. Let's uh, take a look at our flight plan. Looks like Toronto Center is online which is cool. We'll be able to pick up some flight following. Even though it won't last for long. So let's take a look at our route. I'm going to create a new route in Sky Vector. Tilsonburg is going to be our departure airport and we're going to be going to Cleveland over here. So we're going to be flying over Lake Erie. So we'll do an IFR flight since there are clouds en route, it appears. So <clears throat> we're going to first uh, do a VFR departure to this VOR and we're going to fly in Victor... 443 all the way to the dryer VOR. So we have that set, and from there, we'll have to take a look at different approaches that we can take. So I'll do that in route. Actually, here let me let me take a look at the the arrivals. So Erie or Bradford, where's the Erie VOR? No, it's too far out for us. Let's take a look at another arrival. That's coming in from the west, so we don't need that one. coming in from the south. So we don't need that one either. Let's see Zabber 4. That's also coming in from the south. Let's take a look at the the alternate minimums. So we'll figure out one of these ILS uh, approaches in route because none of the arrivals really work for us. But we're going to depart VFR from runway 07 so we don't have to back taxi. And we're going to fly on course of a 214 direct uh, the Aylmer VOR and then from there on we'll be uh, above 4,000 feet. Let's make our cruise altitude 6,000 feet. That should, yeah, that should be good enough for all of our route over Lake Erie. The cruise speed is going to be 140. 060 is our cruise altitude. And it's going to be about an hour and two minutes flight. So let me plug that into um, the flight plan on VATSIM. That'll be off screen. Sorry, you guys can't see this. CYTB. OK. 
Okay, CLE. We're going to depart at 22.40 Zulu time. Hour two minutes of flying. 6,000 feet. And our route is going to be YQO, Victor 443, DJB. And this will be IFR. We'll file that flight plan. Let's set up our fuel and payload for flights in economy. So flights in economy is telling me to add 1,695 pounds. So we need to add 174 pounds to what we have here. Plus 24 more, and that's about it. That's about right. Payload is correct. Actually, you know what? We need to refuel. So let me do that and flight some economy off screen. Sorry, you guys can't see this. Now we'll start flight some economy again. Payload is correct. Okay. We've got Vatsum set up. Let's put in our squat code of 1200 for now. Okay, that's set. Let's put in our VOR. Be 114.2 for Aylmer. And we need a direct chorus of 214. Okay, and our second VOR is going to be drier, which is 113.6. One, one, so we're not picking that one up yet, but we're looking for a radial of. 054 plus 200 minus 30, that's 134. So an inbound radial of 134. There we go, that's set. And I think we're ready to depart. So landing lights on, fasten seatbelts on, pizza heat is on. Fuel pumps are on. Set the cow flaps to trail. We'll set mixtures to auto rich. And what else do we need? I think we're set for takeoff. We'll use runway 07. Flaps. Quarter inch of flaps. Let me just take down some notes. Flying from 
Tilsonburg to Cleveland, IFR. Fuel should be 161 gallons. Let me just double check that. Yep, started with 161. And departure time and takeoff time is 241 Los Angeles time. And we're ready to roll. I want to tune to Toronto Center, 125.77. Get ourselves lined up on the runway. That's why we weren't able to turn before. I forgot the the uh, tailwheel lock. We have to lock it again for takeoff. Put on the brakes, set takeoff power. Power set, here we go. Well, I have a nine maintain mark decimal seven eight torque reader until the first. Maintain mark decimal 70. 70. You're up and on, no lights. And flaps can go up. Flaps. They're up. Climb power set 36 inches and 2350 on manifold on the RPM. Landing lights can come off. Fuel pumps can come off. We're going to start our right turn to heading of 214, or rather a course of 214. We'll put on our carb heat so our engine gets full power in this cold weather. I'm sure I'm wondering what the Crown Alpha there is. Sorry, is somebody calling at Montreal? Yes, sir, Jazz 8975. We are wondering what the current Alpha there is. I'm not sure, I'm controlling to run. <laughs> Air Canada 7593, you're leaving my airspace to the west. Cleveland Center's not online, switch to Nikon 122.8, have a great night. So those clouds might get in our way for IFR flying, for v while we're VFR. So let's just go direct to the VOR. Let's make our course 220.
our cruise altitude is going to be 6,000. So we're going to keep climbing. Toronto Center Airways 1218 request pickup IFR. We are 4,500 climbing, 6,000 uh, just took off from uh, Tilsonburg Airport, Airways 1218. 1218, contact terminal 128.8, decimal 8, Airways 1218. Four zero three. Now you're clear. Direct uh, T-Tad on course. All right, direct T-Tad. Maple seven four zero three. Uh, where's your following to? Uh, what gate are you looking for? Gonna level out here at 6,000 feet. Uh, we're just following to cross runway 33 right, taxi uh, Bravo off the tanker to the apron. Close our cow flaps. Cross 33 right and be up Bravo to the apron. Lead out our mixture for cruise. Maple 7403, climb flight level 230. You do, sir, Maple 7403. Turn off our fast and seatbelt signs. Let's run our departure, Airways 1218, uh, just departed Tilsonburg Airport. We're level at 6000, request pick up IFR to Cleveland. Clear to Cleveland Airport on course. We'll contact Toronto Center Airways 1218 cleared uh, Cleveland Hopkins Airport uh, from present position, clear direct Elmer, uh, not above 6,000 feet, squat 2255. Clear to Cleveland Airport uh, from present position, direct Elmer VOR at 6,000 feet, squawking 2255, airways 1218. Airways 1218, uh, repack correct. Three zero four five airways twelve eighteen, thank you. Maple seven four zero three, contact Toronto Center now, one two five, decimal seven seven, see ya. Over to center, Maple seven four three, thanks for up, bye.
All right. Hi, Airways 1218, you are uh, leaving my airspace, please offline. Uh, please change the crew, take care. Over to Unicom, Airways 1218, thanks for the service, uh, have a good day. You too. Okay, back to Unicom wasn't a long time <laughs> that we had ATC service but it was memorable <laughs> Trying to get back on track with the VOR. that VOR, aren't we? Chasing the needle pretty heavily here. There we go. We're overhead. So now we need to get on a course of Two one three. And we're going to be flying over Majestic Lake Erie. Pretty heavy wind correction here to stay on the VOR. We'll let our uh, autopilot take over here. Actually, no, I'll do some hand flying. Why not?
and we're going to be looking for we're flying right here right now um, on the Victor 443 airway and fails it's a funny waypoint name but that is going to be how long are we flying for over here between this It's not making it easy for me, is it? Distance... 20 plus... 33 plus 25, that's 58. So about 58 nautical miles on uh, this airway before we get to... Before we get to the intersection that we need. So we're going we're gonna to be looking for this needle to come in. I'm going to make a right turn after that. Is that right? Yeah, we'll make a right turn. Oh, okay, I see what I did here. I put in 134 instead of 234. Ah, I'm overcorrecting. I'm trying to get back on the radial. Maybe I should have put it on autopilot. I think I'm okay now. So let's see what's <coughs> going on in Flight Sim News. Um, a lot of sales going on. Head over to airdailyx.net or .com. Just Google airdailyx and I think they have a list of sales that are going on. They usually do. And um, yeah, a lot of good stuff you can get. I, got, I picked up Orbex Vector and Orbex... Um, uh, Orbex Vector and Orbex Open Land Class North America, which is what I'm flying with right now. Um, also, a Coronado sale going on if you like Coronado aircraft, and a whole bunch of other deals going on. What else is new? Uh, X Plane 11 is. Um, it's either in beta or already came out, I'm not sure. I think it's in beta, uh, but you can get it. You can get it now. And um, I'm not sure if it's available on Steam yet. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. But I've been flying I've been flying FSX, and since the DC-3 is my primary ride right now, um, and this is the best model out there, 
There's a good X Aviation model for X Plane of the DC-3, but you know, honestly, even I don't know. I might give it a shot. It's I don't think it's on sale right now, which is a shame. Um, actually, let me check. Yeah, it doesn't look like they had they're advertising any sales. Yeah, it's forty bucks, so it's quite expensive and uh arguably not as good as the one for FSX. The one that I'm flying right now, which is freeware. So I'm hesitant to pick that one up unless it's on sale. Although I'm kinda curious to do a flight in X Plane in a in a DC three. But for now, I'm flying an FSX. I'm uh, um, kind of waiting for Dovetail's new flight simulator to come out. Maybe this will pour it over to it. Um, they came out with Flight School, Dovetail's Flight School, but they're going to be coming out with a uh, with a consumer version of an update to FSX. I think um, early in 2017. I think they were supposed to come out with it in the holiday season, but they, they've delayed it. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'll, I'm curious how add-ons will port over to that and whether developers will start creating um, integrations so that you can put fly your favorite aircraft, like this one for me, in the new flight simulator. Uh, so hopefully I'm, I'm waiting out the prepared P3D popularity right now in hopes that Dovetail will come out with something a little bit more consumer friendly than uh, prepared. Prepared is a, is a great simulator, but it's designed for like the military. It's designed for flight schools. It's technically not for the consumer market. So yeah, what we're doing now is I'm waiting for this needle to come in. The um, um, for this needle to come in, that way we'll intercept our second VOR, the drier VOR, and we'll head direct to that. So D Pilot asks um, whether they're dropping the original flight sim. Um, I don't think they're dropping. If you're referring to Dovetail's flight school, I think they were. They were meant to kind of go hand in hand. The Dovetail's Flight School was supposed to introduce people to that were new to Flight Simulator and have like an easy platform for them to learn. And then they're going to come out with uh, their updated version of FSX for everybody, I guess. So that was kind of the plan all along. I don't think they're dropping it. I, don't, I can't imagine it's been that popular, Dovetail's Flight School. I mean, just judging by the fact that nobody really streams it that I've seen. Um, and you don't hear too much about it these days. I don't even know if you can develop add-ons for it. But uh, yeah, I'm kind of eagerly anticipating their remake of FSX. And they've, they've shown some preview videos. It looks similar to FSX, but it looks nicer. Oh, the flight school got scathing reviews. Hmm, I see. So hopefully they, they'll do a better job. Maybe that's why they delayed releasing the the um, new simulator to develop it a little bit better, a little bit more. <laughs> it was deemed a money grab. Wow. Yeah, 
they look pretty nice from what from the previews that I saw the flight school but um, I wasn't really moved to try it myself or to download it So I get most of my flight sim news from Air Daily X. It's a really nice website. I like it. Um, it's the guy's got his, the guy who runs it has his pulse on a lot of different stuff that's being developed. And you know, in, in fact, I kind of made a resolution to myself not to really get a lot of new airports. Not that I do already, but um, since I'm going to be flying all over the world now uh, in flight sim. Um, or at least all over North America, and I'll try other parts in the world. Uh, now that I've kind of switched over from Pilot Edge to Vatsim, not that I have anything against Pilot Edge, but um, in Southern California, you always get the same weather and and whatnot. So I'm kind of in a in a mood for a little bit more variety. But uh, what was my original train of thought? Yeah, so I'm not getting a lot of airports. I just I just got. Over the holiday break, I got the Orbex Global packages, and uh, that's going to suit me pretty well. I'm going to check those out and f try some flights in other parts of North America, especially in the colder regions while it's in the winter time, and uh, maybe Europe as well. But I do like keeping up to date on Air Daily X about new scenery that's coming out. I just like looking at the new Orbex stuff. They do a good job of posting a lot of screenshots on their website. I think um, either Fly Tampa or some other companies coming out with a new Amsterdam scenery, which is highly anticipated. So I'm going to put it on autopilot here and let's take a look at what kind of approaches we can do into Cleveland. So we're at 6,000 feet. Heading over about 245. Let's actually make it follow the, the nav. We've got that set to 213. One of the weird bugs here at the aircraft is when you put it to nav lock, it doesn't follow the um, course that you already set, it resets it to the direct course to the VOR, so I have to hit nav, I'll show you, I'll have to hit nav lock and then quickly spin this back to my original course. It's one of the weird things about the aircraft. There's not a lot of, not a lot of bad parts to this freeware model, but that's just one of the annoying things. Alright, so while that is flying for us. Just want to make sure that this needle doesn't come in. I'm pretty sure it's at 5, 58 DME that it's going to start moving, but uh, I'll have to keep an eye on that. So let's take a look here. Winds are out of the... well, winds are calm actually, so let's pick a, um, an ILS that's along our route. So something east, something heading east. So like uh, zero 06 left or zero 06 right would be good. Yeah, so let's take a look at 
the airport diagram. Zero six right would be better for us because it's closer to the general aviation parking. So there's no there's no ATC here, so we can kind of create our own uh, create what we want to do. So there's dryer. This is good. There's dryer, and then Searle intersection. Is, we're gonna fly from Dryer, VOR, 6.7 nautical miles until the uh, Searle intersection, and then we're gonna intercept the localizer. We're gonna pretend that we're getting vectored. I'm not gonna do a procedure turn here. Uh, I don't know. I, I haven't decided yet. I might do a procedure turn here, but um, we're gonna. We're going to intercept the localizer on a course of 057 from Dryer. And in the case of a missed approach, we're going to climb to 1600 feet and uh, follow the Chardon radial 265. Um, at 1600 feet, we're going to turn right, climb to 3100 feet, and, f and intercept the radial. Uh, 265 until we get to Le Brin. Airport elevation here is 800 feet. And we're going to be looking for a right hand turnout from um, looks like that needle's coming in a little bit already. So I have to look out for that. Oh, sorry, you guys couldn't see that. Uh, I showed I showed uh, this needle right here on NAV2 is coming in. Well, that'll be because it's far away from us. It'll it'll come in slowly. Okay, so that is about our approach briefing complete. Hopefully, we'll get some ATC, but I'm not counting on it. Uh, Cleveland. Everything else around here, Atlanta, Indiana, Toronto seems to be online, but Cleveland Center is not online. So let's put in Searle intersection into our flight plan. There we go. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to, we're approximately over here somewhere right now. And once we reach fails intersection, hopefully, hopefully we won't fail to make the turn at the right time, and then we'll intercept the two, three, four inbound radial to dryer VOR and make a left-hand turn from dryer to uh, get to the Searle intersection, which is at about 6.7 DME. And then from there, we're going to be making uh, we're going to intercept the localizer. You know, well, let's, let's practice my procedure turn. So let's do a procedure turn here, and then uh, intercept the localizer. And uh, yeah, and then we'll do the ILS six right approach. So that is the plan. I'm going to take it off autopilot here while we're flying away from the field. I'll put it back on once I'm going to do the approach just to save myself from getting task saturated with everything. The cloud is a little disorienting.
Good thing we flew IFR. Although we could have we could have been below below these clouds. But it's it's good for me to practice my IFR flying. I've been getting a little rusty. Let's see how far away we are from the DME two about fifty six nautical miles. So, like I mentioned in my previous streams, I'm going to focus on the DC-3, on this uh, model of the DC-3. I'm going to fly it almost exclusively. I've gotten to the point where I kind of want to focus on one aircraft, and I've been jumping around. I've gone from the Grumman Goose to the Catalina, and I've had each on uh, Flight Sim Economy. Right now, I'm, I'm working off to pay off the Catalina that I bought. But I wanna, I'm want i going to focus on the DC-3, I think. I'm going to... Uh, stay with this one, at least in my current judgment, because it's such a classic aircraft. This model is freeware, and it's it's a great great model. It's a good aircraft to really practice your fundamentals and and uh, learn how to fly fly right. And it's you know it's just complicated enough that I get to play around with all the different. Uh, switches and whatnot. I just turned on the prop the ice since we're in the clouds. But it's not so it's not so complicated that it takes away from the actual flying and you just want to put it on autopilot because there's so many switches to control. It's an aircraft that invites hand flying and I I do like hand flying. Ah, oh, it messed up my my radio again once I took it off from Navlock. Quite a radical wind correction we have to do. Although, you know what? Our drift We have to correct our gyro drift. Quite radically, actually, it's pretty surprising. Let's put on some ATC one one nine point five five. Let's see how busy Indiana Center is. I don't know if you heard that, but the steward just said it was fun last night. Let's do it again. Good afternoon. Welcome aboard. Radial still coming in here.
Virginia Airport, 3324 Bravo Alpha is with you five miles east of the central, five miles west, sorry, of the central city VOR. We are IFR to Evansville. November 324 Bravo Alpha, your radar contact position is reported climbing out of 1,800 for 4,000. Climb and maintain the 4,000. The local altimeter is 3060. Maintain VFR of your clearance for you just a second. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. We'll stand by for clearance 324 Bravo Alpha. November 324 Bravo Alpha is clear to the Evansville Airport. Radar vectors are love. Maintain at 4,000. And your squawk is 6602. I maintain 4,000. Squawk 6602. 324 Bravo Alpha. Session 24 Bravo Alpha. The readback is correct. Uh, you're clear direct to our love. Clear direct Iowa, 324 Bravo Alpha. So we're in the soup, so I'm just flying on instruments. It's important to calibrate your artificial horizon in this aircraft before you um, before you enter these conditions, because it is gonna, and it's not gonna be accurate from when you start the aircraft. So there's the uh, radio coming in from the second of EOR, so we're going to go on a heading of 234. We're going to plug in 113.6. There we go. Got about 40 nautical miles to go. I want to give myself a little bit of a break from that flight. Uh, 24 Bravo Alpha, Evansville is reporting light snow, ceiling 1,800 overcast, temperature minus eight, and viewpoint minus one two with an altimeter of 3063. Say so request approach. So I said I'm going to give myself a break and do autopilot for a little bit, or actually until our approach. Indiana Center request ILS runway 4 approach at Evansville, 324 Bravo Alpha. Cessna 24 Bravo Alpha, you can expect the ILS runway 4 approach. Copy, 24 Bravo Alpha. Now we've reached the other shore of Lake Erie. Almost, you can see it off to our left. So let me show you guys where I'm flying on the map. Some more banter with the stewardess, if you guys can hear that on the stream. Alright, so if we look at where we are, um, we just reached the Fales intersection, so we're going to be flying along the coast, just like we saw it off to our left-hand side, and um, here, I'll show you guys again. So we're flying along the coast here. Oh, some more clouds just spawned in.
That's funny. I, I hope you guys can hear this banter that's going on with the co-pilot and the stewardess. It's pretty funny. I think the longer you fly, the more elaborate it gets in this add-on. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Fails is a... They could have tried harder to name that intersection. I had a fail uh, on my stream yesterday as I was approaching fails. So, it's an ominously named one. Oh, okay, so you guys can't hear the banter. Yeah, it's like they have these sound files that when you're in cruise, they just play them in this add-on. It's pretty funny. And uh, what's also funny is they keep mentioning this girl, Irene. Like, oh, Captain, I heard you had a fun time with Irene last night. And as DP, as you know, my fiance's name is Irene. So uh, that's another funny thing about this aircraft. All right, so... Let's, uh, yeah, so as I was saying, we're flying along the coast. We're going to have to do some quick series of turns over here. We're going to pass by Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Airport off to our left-hand side. This one's better, actually shows you the coastline. Um, so for our procedure turn, just trying to figure out Runway six right. Let's open. There we go. So we will be at six thousand feet. Can we go lower? Actually, we can go to 4,000 feet. At this point, we have to be at 3,000 feet. So as we're doing the procedure turn, we can descend to technically 3,100, I think. But, I'll yeah, so I'll descend to 3,100. But we can start our descent now to 4,000. Maybe it's too early. Let's say... Let's do the calculation here. We're going to be... Uh, descending 2,000 feet. That's 500 feet per minute. So that's... One, two, three. That's four minutes. And we go about two, minute, two miles a minute. So that's eight miles out. So let's say... Um, Let's say 10 miles out, we're going to start a descent, 10 miles from Dryer. And currently, we are 33 miles out. So we'll start our descent uh, 10 miles out, and then we will... Lines 289 after the Brickyard VOR, you're clear, direct the Dryer VOR, Delta Julia Bravo. Oh, okay, DP, that's good to know. So 3100 3, is the minimum safe altitude around these parts. So, we'll fly... We'll fly to the Searle, Searle intersection. And from there, we are going to do a procedure turn. Let's see, 057. So that's 237 minus 45. That's about 192 degrees. 
so we'll fly 192 and then a fly back. Okay, so I'm going to note that. So basically, and again, my procedure turns, I kind of make it up as I, as I go along. I'm not sure what the proper procedure is, but we're going to be flying to dry your VOR, then turning left on heading 146. And once we reach this intersection, we're going to fly heading of 192. And then we're going to fly the reciprocal heading of... We're going to make a right turn and fly heading of 102. American 7, 20 Indy Center, good afternoon. You're quickly below the airport. Radar vector is Falmouth, and then it's filed to climb and maintain at 5,000. Expect flight level 230. Sorry, we're going to fly 012. Departure is going to be on this frequency, squawk 6606. Yeah, 012. Then, then we're gonna. Then we're gonna intercept the glide slope. American 720, the squawk feedback is correct. The Lexington altimeter. The localizer, that is. You can expect friendly four for departure at five eight two taxi. We're gonna intercept the localizer at zero five seven course. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, the garbled way that I explained it, but. Uh, We'll fly. Cessna 24 Bravo Alpha, the Evansville altimeter is 3063. Turn left heading 320, vectors ILS runway 4. Altimeter 3063, Evansville, turn left heading 320, vectors for the ILS runway 4 approach, 324 Bravo Alpha. We'll figure it out. So I believe that's Cleveland off to our off to our left. Luckily the city's kind of far from the airport, so well that's that's pretty cool. They have like a little they have an airport right next to the city. Hmm. I should try flying there sometime, but it is gonna cause some lag problems. But Cleveland Airport, the one we're flying to now. Oh there's a stadium. Cleveland Airport uh, is far enough away that I don't think it'll cause us lag. I wonder what that airport is n right next to the city of Cleveland. Let's take a look. Cleveland. Lines 289, you're clear direct the dryer VOR. It's going to be Delta, Juliet, Bravo. Okay, clear to dryer VOR Where are we right now? Okay, here we are. So we're just outside the reach of Toronto Center and not quite at Indiana. So Cleveland Center would cover this area. I was just wondering because he kept saying dryer VOR and that's where we were heading. So I was wondering how close we were to his airspace. So that airport on the waterfront is called Cleve Cleveland uh, Burke Lakefront Airport. So I should try flying there sometime. It looks pretty cool. Stadiums. We saw those stadiums. Pretty cool. the autopilot is having such a hard time staying on course. It usually does a better job than this. There's the airport that we're going to be landing at. Cleveland Hopkins, I believe it's called. It's 
take a look at the airport chart again. Andy, sir, American 720 is ready to taxi. American 720, the altimeter 3049, runway 4, taxi via Alpha. Runway 4 via Alpha and uh, 3049. It looks like there's three runways called 06, but that must be a taxiway or something. Or maybe they had a third runway that they got rid of or something like that. Uh, I mean, what I'm, when I'm looking out the window, it looks like there's three of them. Uh, one, two, three. But we need 06 right. That's probably the one we're going to be going to. Cessna 2 Bravo Alpha, fly heading 310. <laughs> the autopilot's ready for the holidays. Fly heading 310, 324 Bravo Alpha. Okay, it's back on track. So 20 miles out, so about 10 miles to go before top of descent. Delta 52, contact Atlanta Center 121.35, we'll see you. That's on the center, 21.35, Delta 2747, 80 Center, you with me, sir? What is that over there? Oh, is that the... Was I looking at a different airport over there? I must have been. Uh, I'm, I'm all confused. I could have sworn that we'd already passed Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Is there another large airport in the vicinity? Not really. And that was in there. Let's take a look uh, outside. Last aircraft check land and readable. Delta 2747. Delta 2747, Andy Center, good afternoon. Welcome aboard. You can expect from runway 28 right. I thought we already had passed Cleveland the airport. Oh, because oh, we were turning. Eight right. Oh, because okay. we were turning and stuff uh, to intercept the radio. American 7 at 20, the wind at Lexington 3203 on departure 5 runway heading runway 4, clear for takeoff. So I'm not going crazy, because I was like... Clear for takeoff runway 4 on the runway heading after takeoff. The airport had passed off to our left wing already. November but then two, we turned. 4, Bravo Alpha, descent and maintain 2000. Dean Center, you broke up their descent to what again? 324 Bravo Alpha. Cessna 24 Bravo Alpha, descent and maintain 2000, sir. Down to 2000, 24 Bravo Alpha. Six more miles till top of descent.
In the other side, there is a snow west at uh, 508. Currently, the athlete level 370, cruising inbound uh, Papa, uh, the ex area of Victor. Uh, we have 127 track miles to go. Southwest 508 in the center, good afternoon. Recycle your transponder, transponder squawk 6610, please. Squawk 6610 for Southwest 508. American 720s, radar contact, say altitude passing. I'm going to start the descent. 2400, American 720. American 720, climb maintain level 320, proceed direct final with resume on that. 230, uh, direct travel to zoom on now. Yeah, it's okay. Down to 4,000. Delta 735, you're going to be leaving my airspace to the south. This is offline, but if you stay on my frequency, you'll get you over to Atlanta here shortly. All right, we can turn on our landing lights. Roger, thank you. Delta 735. Keep our de-icer on for now. Southwest 508, your radar contact. Seat 37 miles north and west of the Terra Hook. You are for level 370. Welcome aboard. Make sure to oh, on the Cessna 324 Bravo Alpha is 900 miles from uh, Hogmu. Turn or right heading at zero one zero. Maintain two thousand till south shot low plaza. Cleared ILS runway floor approach. Turn right heading zero one zero. Maintain full established on the localizer. Cleared copy clearance for the ILS runway floor approach three two four Bravo Alpha. Indianapolis Center, Delta 3354, heavy with you, flight level 310. Delta 3354, heavy and decenter, good evening, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir, and uh, we'd like to request to uh, step off the deck for uh, about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Next train, just report back, please, thanks. We're on farm, we'll report back, 3354, heavy. Alliance 289, you're leaving my airspace to the north. Unfortunately, Cleveland is offline. Your radar service is terminated. Frequency change. Okay, Roger, over to you, Tom Alliance 289. Center American 289 with you, level 360. Minneapolis Center's online. American 289, heavy good afternoon. Squawk 6607 and IDF, please. Squawk 6607 American, that's 2289. Cessna 2 Alpha, I was a little bit premature on that uh, heading, fly heading tree, correction, 330. Cancel approach. 30 left heading 330, 324 Bravo Alpha. American at 289-6607 on the swap, sir. 6607, American 289. Delta 27 of 47, your discretion to send across the Nichols intersection at maintain of 111-11,000-250 knots, advised leaving fire level 310. And, uh, you, uh, send that in a text. Alright. So we're level up 4,000. Let's kick our speed back up. Urgent 289, you are radar contact 32 miles north and west of the Terra Hood VOR, level 360. Good evening. 
görevli. Minneapolis Center, go 3354, heavy, back on. Welcome back, sir. Yeah. S924 Bravo, let's try this again. You are now five miles from the move. Turn a right heading 010. Maintain 2000 till established, clear dial S runway 4 approach. Turn your right heading 010, descend and maintain 2000 until established, 324 Bravo Alpha. Delta 2652, into you with me, sir. Sorry, I'm kind of quiet, guys. I'm just focusing on the approach here. Hey, Popey Gaming. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Just gonna be right on time. We're just gonna do an interesting ILS approach into Cleveland Airport. Hopefully, yeah, it'll be interesting. Center, good evening. We are currently. Delta 2652, Indy Center. Good afternoon. You can expect runway 28 right. So if you look at a map. Please. We're in south of Lake Erie by Cleveland. Uh, we're going, we can expect runway 28 right. We're mocking. I'm approaching this point right here. Oh, that's your same We're mocking point 28. And then we're going to make a series of turns to get on the oh, ILS for runway 6 right at Cleveland. So that is the plan. Hopefully everything goes according to plan. What game is that, gaming? Oh, this game, FSX. Delta 3354, have you say mock speed? Hey, Haggis, welcome to the stream. Currently, uh, mock uh, point eight zero three three six four. Delta 3354, reduced to point seven six for spacing, please. Reduce to seven six for spacing delta three three four. And Indy Center, Delta twenty five forty seven with you three three seven to three five zero. Thanks, DP, for the twenty five forty seven Indy Center. Good afternoon, DP. Helping out the uh, helping out the new guys. Alright, I'm gonna start my turn. I'm gonna start this turn right here. Um, and I'm looking at this diagram. I'm going to turn into be turning into heading of course of one four six. Delta twenty seven forty seven of Fort Columbus altimeter three zero four six. Roger. Scenery looks pretty good in my opinion. Delta seven thirty five contact Atlantis Center one two three five. We'll see you. And we're gonna descend to three thousand feet. We're just gonna Atlantis Center on one one point three five. Thank you. Delta seven thirty five. Cessna two four Bravo Alpha, the wind at Evansville. Three four zero at five runway four clear to land. Clear to land. Yeah, clear to land runway four three two four Bravo Alpha. I'm just setting my dryer the dryer VOR onto VOR two so that I can. Set the localizer into VOR1. Localizer frequency is 
111.9. Yeah, thanks DP for helping out uh, Popey Popey Gaming. While I'm working on the approach here. Southwest 508, you can proceed at directly Nashville VOR, Bravo November Alpha. Direct to Bravo, uh, Bravo November Alpha, for Southwest 508. So I keep forgetting to check the ATIS at these airports, but now is not the time. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and check it on Sky Vector. Check the weather on Sky Vector. Oh, no time to do that. I have to start my procedure turn. I'm going to go to a heading of zero, 19 or 2 as I briefed. Hey, Enter Haggis, thanks for the follow, I appreciate it. I'm going to set my timer once we level out to one minute. So what I'm doing now is... Uh, we reached this point right here, so now I'm flying in a heading 192 so that I can go back on a heading of zero one two, and intercept the glide slope. Uh, sorry, the keep saying glide slope. Intercept the localizer. Um, Delta twenty seven forty seven amend altitude two cross Nichols at nine thousand. And fly a course of zero five seven. Nichols at nine thousand. And uh, at this point, our, I'll intercept the glide slope at uh, Cerro Delta intersection. Delta twenty six fifty two descend across the Nichols intersection at nine thousand. The Port Columbus altimeter is 3046. Delta 2652, my apologies. Descend across the Nichols intersection at or above 9000. The Port Columbus altimeter is 3046. We'll cross, we'll cross Nichols at about 9000. And okay, so now we're we're inbound procedure turn, and uh, I'm flying. Going to be flying a heading of zero one two, and that's how we'll intercept the the um, what's it called the localizer. Can't 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 remember the word localizer today. For some reason, there's no, there's no uh, DME on the ILS. I'm not sure why. Should have it. Hmm. Interesting. So our minimums are going to be 977 feet. sure how to control this switch but I'm not going to worry about it. Localizer is coming in so we're going to be going to 5-7. I'm 
gonna set the plane to nav lock. Once the glide slope comes in, I'm gonna set it to approach. So there's runway six, right? So I guess there is a third runway here. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about it because the the uh, the updated chart shows only two runways. I've never flown an ILS in this aircraft yet, with all the flying that I've done on it. Because I've been mostly flying in SoCal and smaller airports and doing VFR.